Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. We head out to California. Stanford scorched the Devils. Butler pulled off an upset, and McKenna earns a pin to win the deal. Number one in the pack, head coach Jason Borelli joins us. Jason, how are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you? Good. I know you're getting ready to go on the road, but before we... Uh, let you go on the road. I've got to talk to you about what was one of the top matchups of the, of the weekend to watch, certainly top matchup in the pack to watch, and it was you guys versus Arizona State. Uh, then ranked number 14, Arizona State. You then were ranked number 16. i got to believe there's been some movement there. But it was uh, a nice, confident victory, 21-14. It didn't start that way, Coach. Uh, it started as Arizona State really went out in front. They got uh, two victories, a 6-0 lead in the duel, winning the first two bouts, and then it was 9-0. What's going through your head at this point? Uh, well, uh, a lot. You know, obviously, well, you know, I think the competitor and all of us as coaches um, and obviously just the, um, you know, the belief we have in our athletes thinks you can win every weight. So uh, when you lose two right off the bat, you're thinking, well, um, you know, we had intentions of winning all 10, but the reality of it is we know it's division one athletics and, um, there's going to get guys knocked off that you expect to win. But so, you know, you go down six then you start thinking, well, there's eight more weights to go, which is a great thing. And then, um, you know, maybe this is going to come down to some guys stepping up and, and scoring bonus points, uh, or having big upset wins that maybe others don't, um, foresee us having, which, you know, as a coaching staff, we always believe, you know, a guy like Nathan Butler is going to uh, be able to beat a guy like Tanner Hall. Um, of course, up and down the lineup, even though maybe you're not seated as high or, or ranked as high as your opponent, we always um, have have great belief in our athletes. So, you know, I think, though, you know, the reality of it is you go down 6-0 and you're thinking, OK, um, where could we maybe uh, pull uh, an upset on paper? And then also who, who might have a chance to score some bonus points to get us back in this? And um, both of those things happened. Um, yeah. We we ended up getting big upset um, later in the duel from Nathan Butler, as you mentioned, at heavyweight. And then we also got bonus points. You know, Joey McKenna got a pin. So those things are huge in a duel. We'll talk, we'll talk about McKenna in a minute. To finish up on Butler, uh, I guess we see it more now than perhaps over the last 10 years. But sudden victory, you either see a guy dig down and bring out everything he's got left. Butler did that. He was he was able to register a takedown with five seconds left in the sudden victory period to knock off Hall. What did that tell you about Butler? Well, it was actually it was really impressive. Um, you know, despite winning in, in overtime, we felt like he controlled the match um, throughout regulation and had put himself in a lot of positions to uh, have a chance to win. And actually. Uh, earlier in overtime, he had a, a takedown, which looking back on it now, of course, we, we know it was a takedown. Um, it was called one originally in overtime. Then it got waved off by the side official. Uh, there was a big discussion and got waved off. So then Nathan had to go get another one, which was pretty impressive um, after kind of a, you know, deflating where you, you go from a high, they call two, they take it away. And, and so, you know, there was a lot of great things that came out of that, out of that match. One, uh, the, the way he controlled the match just in regulation, we felt like, and then, then two, um, having to score twice in overtime, um, is not easy against a guy who's, uh, ranked higher than you and who had beat you the last time you competed against them just a, about a month and a half ago. So those things were big, but also, um, you know, if you aren't paying super close attention to Stanford, um, one thing people might not realize is the weekend prior, uh, we were on the East Coast, and actually Nathan had lost twice. He lost to the Princeton heavyweight and the Drexel heavyweight. So he was coming off a little bit of a rough weekend and, um, you know, was able to pick himself up and have a big win over a guy who's ranked in the top five in the country, and it just so happened to help us win a big dual meet. So it's a pretty neat storyline, and so we're really, really happy with uh, uh, Nathan's performance. You know, Nathan and I will agree on one thing. A long trip like that coast to coast for a big guy? Let me tell you something. That's not something we're looking forward to. I'd rather sit and read my history book. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, our guest this morning, Jason Borelli in the Nike hot seat. You mentioned Joey McKenna. Now we're going to bounce around here a little bit, coach, but hopefully be able to talk about all the kids within the given time. Ranked number three in the country. He really did do an outstanding performance. Uh, but one we expect from him now, he picked up a fall in a minute 25 over Nico Villarreal at 141. Uh, best on the team as far as his record goes, 22-1 and one on the season. What did you learn in his performance? 
Well, our expectations for him are very high, but you know, thankfully, and probably more importantly, are that his expectations for himself are very high, and that's uh, that's important and and obviously um, very exciting for a coaching staff. Uh, but in terms of that duel, you know, what we learned is that. Uh, you know, he's continuing to go out and, um, and practice what we preach. You know, we've spent a lot of time this year focusing on uh, scoring bonus points, and we've talked to the guys about the importance of that, especially coming down in big duels, but also um, and as we go into tournament season, you know, in order to do something special as a team, you got to score bonus points. So to see Joey go out and, um, you know, really get after it and, and put a, a big stamp on a, a great dual meet um, and, and put the match out of reach uh, with a pen was exciting, not not only for our team, but it also was really exciting for the crowd. And we had great support for that match and a lot of people and it was a great environment. So, um, you know, just learned maybe a little bit about the enthusiasm that uh, he shows every time he goes on the mat and his competitiveness. But we knew that. But, you know, it's just nice to see. And I think it's great for other people to see and witness as well. So. Redshirt senior Peter Galley scored the first points of the duel for Stanford. Uh, and we're kind of, like I said, we're kind of going out of order here, but it's almost in level of importance for me to see how these guys are developing. I saw in, in what Peter was able to perform, at least from my, my, my vantage point, is a guy that wasn't willing to give up anything to Jason Peterson. What did you see in Peter Galley? Yeah, Peter is having a great um, a great month, really. I mean, he's had a, he's had a great career in terms of uh, development and just attitude and the things he brings to our program. But the last few weeks, he's boy, he's been wrestling really well. Um, ever since uh, he moved up to 174 pounds, uh, I think he's maybe six and one since moving up, and now he's ranked in some of the national rankings in the top 20. He's had a win over a top 15 wrestler, and he's just doing really well at that weight, uh, filling in. Uh, originally for Jim Wilson, one of our All-Americans who suffered an injury and has been out of the lineup. And so Peter's really nicely finding himself in a good position, and um, and that's great. But, you know, from, from that match, what was so neat is, you know, you mentioned earlier, we went down, uh, we lost the first two, and we were down by six. And then for him to go out and uh, kind of, you know, I guess there were, I don't know if six point victor or six point lead is is, uh, is bleeding at that point, but to kind of you know so to speak stop the bleeding and get some momentum on our side was big. Um, but you know, so he just he wrestles tough. You know, Peter's a, Peter's very athletic. He's a great wrestler. He's a fifth year senior. He's a guy who he he wrestles um, with so much enthusiasm and passion and just believes and bleeds everything Stanford wrestling. And you know, he's not only out there wrestling for himself. He's the guy that you can tell is always wrestling for uh, his team, the coaches, the fans, the alumni, um, and he carries that enthusiasm, excitement every time he competes for Stanford, and uh, that's really special. Makes it fun for the fans, too. Now 19-5 and five on the year, 6-1 and one in dual, uh, dual meet action. Redshirt senior Josh Marchuk uh, uh, cut into the Arizona State team uh, lead with a 3-1 decision over Austin Harris at 97. Were you expecting that? We were. That's a match where we have a lot of confidence in Josh, and he's really hitting his stride, and which is exciting. Um, to be honest with you, we think he can widen that gap. We think he can win uh, more convincingly. I will say that he very much controlled the match and was the offensive wrestler and aggressive the whole time, had a lot of opportunities to score, and, and just didn't make the most of them. We expect Josh to keep pushing himself further and further from a guy like that, which which is great. Uh, but. I, I just oh, interrupt. How did you get him out of Schaumburg, Illinois? Well, we have a we have a good connection in that part of the country. One of my assistant coaches, Ray Blake, is from the Chicago area uh, originally, and has spent some time uh, helping with the uh, the national teams in the summer in Illinois, and um, developed a nice little connection to that state, which is big. And um, you know, Josh is a fifth year senior who who was having a great career at heavyweight. You know, he wrestled his first four years up at heavyweight for us and decided as a, as a senior, he wanted to go down um, to 197 and has done a fantastic job. He's a captain for us and uh, just a tremendous human being. But, um, you know, in terms of a student athlete, he's a, he's an amazing, um, you know, just leader for us and just uh, everything you could ask for it.
uh, from a coaching perspective. Coach, he looks good at 97. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you accepted his, his idea. Uh, 197, he looks, he makes it look good. True freshman Gabe Townsville gave Stanford a 12-11 dual uh, lead with the 12-8 decision over Josh Kramer at 125. You know as well as I do, the little guys are awful fun to watch and they can score a lot of points quickly. Absolutely. And Gabe, Gabe, you know, he takes that to another level. You know, if you get a chance to watch him, boy, he can, he can move. He, he's, he's lightning fast. Um, only guy I don't think he's faster than is probably me. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, <laughs> I always, I always kid with him that I, I was a, I'm very slow. I have slow feet. was never very, uh, quick or fast. And so to coach an athlete like that is, uh, is, is interesting because he can do some things that I could, never dreamed of doing which is pretty neat but Gabe has really come on strong started a little rocky his first competitions at 125 but had a breakout tournament at the Southern Scuffle and took fifth and and has carried carried that momentum through the last month which is um, great and what's exciting is every time out you can see him gain a little confidence with every win he gains a little confidence and he's only going to get better he's got a, a, a huge uh, upward trajectory and um we're excited to see where he'll be come march so i am too he's a true freshman and we like this kid a lot redshirt junior connor schramm picked up another victory for the cardinal with an 8-2 decision against ted rico at 33 uh ranked 14th in the country we expect him to get out there and get after it uh schramm secured a takedown in the first and turned rico for two near fall points perhaps he had more uh it was a 4-0 lead at that point take us from there yeah, Connor went out and set the tone right away, got out, uh, got after the guy, got a takedown, rode hard on top, and worked really, really hard to, to get up a, a big lead. And um, I think he was at one point, he was in position to get the major, <clears throat> gave up an escape late. Um, uh, no, he gave up a reversal uh, late, I believe, and that kind of cut into his ability to, to try to get a major decision. But um, was aggressive on his feet, aggressive on top, and, and Connor's really trying to just hit his stride. He, you know, he moved up a weight. He started the year out at 125, moved up. That, of course, made room for Gabe Townsell. It's a healthier weight for Connor, um, but he's not only is he still adjusting a little bit to that weight. Um, he he had missed a lot of time from for injury, so he's just getting back going. And I think, um, you know, over the next week or two, he'll start wrestling himself back into great shape and be in real real good position and strong for us. And he's. He's a lot of talent. He's a guy who's really passionate about wrestling and um, a lot of fun to coach. So no doubt that, that um, he could have a, a great uh, a great finish to this year. Really, the story I think of this tournament in wins and losses, at least Butler with the upset, McKenna earning the pin to win it all, and uh, I think those are the kind that we look at. And go, oh yes, that's a nice statement. <laughs> nice statement indeed. You guys uh, are are really heading on the road now to uh, take on both Boise State on Saturday the twenty eighth and Monday the thirtieth. You'll be uh, uh, with the Beavers televised on the Pac twelve network. Yes, looking forward to that. We actually leave. Uh, later today, uh, this after well, this evening, and we'll be up in Boise. We wrestle them first on Saturday, and then travel over to Corvallis to wrestle um, Oregon State. So two conference matches for us. Uh, last two conference matches, and um, you know, really important for us to to uh, stay focused and continue to uh, you know, move forward in the way that we have. And looking forward to it. It's it's always great to wrestle in Corvallis. It's a team that um, you know. We've been wrestling for a lot of time, you know, a long time, and, and they've got the best of us a lot. So um, at some point, we'd like to turn that tide in our direction. So we'll see if we can get things started this weekend. Well, maybe turning the tide or a bit of a tsunami. Stanford and the Cardinal are doing exceedingly well right now, and we expect that trend to continue after all their head coach is Jason Borelli, the son of the great head coach of Central Michigan. I'll tell you what, ton of respect for your pop, but man, you are earning your stripes the hard way. You've got some great and talented kids, a strong staff, and, a, and an athletic department. A lot of people don't realize how big athletics, a percentage of student a athletes on campus at Stanford, what that percentage is like. It's a huge number compared to the overall, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, glad you brought that up. That's one of the more unique things at Stanford that I think we have a uh, you know, we're a private university and undergraduate enrollment is uh, just under 7,000 or right about 7,000. And uh, of those 7,000 undergrads, 
eight to 900 of them are student athletes. So from a you know, percentage perspective, we're a big chunk of the undergraduate population. And that's a pretty unique thing that you don't get at a lot of places. We have 36 varsity sports, I think 850 or so student athletes um, representing those 36 sports. And with, you know, just under 7,000 undergrads, um, pretty neat experience. You, you, you're, you're definitely, um, a big fish in a little pond if you're a student athlete on campus and, uh, relative, uh, relative to maybe other places. So, uh, that's, that's pretty neat. And, um, it's a big part of this culture. Uh, athletics is embraced, uh, within the, the Stanford community as a whole and, uh, respected as well. And, and so, uh, that's a pretty neat thing. You know what? You're going to get respect if you respect yourself and you hold your guys up to a high standard, and we appreciate that, Jason. We'll uh, say the score one more time. God knows you earned it. Stanford 21, Arizona State 14, on the road against Boise State tomorrow, the 28th, and then on television, Pac-12 Network will feature it. It'll be uh, the Stanford Cardinal at Oregon State, the home of the Beavers. I'm looking forward to seeing that, Coach. Great talking with you today, Jason. We wish you continued success. Thank you, and thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Our guest in the Nike hot seat today, Jason Borelli, a good friend of the sport of wrestling, a true leader, if there ever was one. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching.